to cover uh, the officer involved shooting last night. Last night, early this morning, two JSO officers were working secondary employment, which is authorized secondary employment, in full uniform at the Club Aqua Club at 11,000 Block of Beach Boulevard. The officers involved were Officer M.D. Peterson, a 12-year veteran, and Officer M.S. Roundsville. He was also a 12-year veteran. A little history on what happened last night. It was a busy night at the club. There were several fights inside the business, the skirmishes that required the police to intervene several times before closing. It is a Saturday night and usually a pretty busy night at that club, apparently. At 2 a.m. at closing time, as the patrons were exiting the club, Officer Peterson overheard talk among the patrons at the front of the club that somebody was going to go to their car and get a gun. At that time, Officer Peterson went to his vehicle and armed himself with his department-issued AR-15 rifle. As both officers were walking through the parking lot and clearing the business patrons from the parking lot, Officer Peterson was approached by two subjects who identified a male in the parking lot who was armed with a gun. They pointed out that individual to Officer Peterson. Officer Peterson quickly saw the subject who was still armed with the handgun, holding in his hand, and walking towards the front of the club. Peterson approached the subject, confronted him, repeatedly ordered him to stop, drop the gun, get on the ground. The subject refused to comply with every one of Officer Peterson's orders. Officer Peterson was concerned not only for the safety of the hundreds of people in the parking lot, but for his own safety with an armed male in the parking lot of an open business or a closed business. He opened fire on the subject, fired five times, striking him and killing him. Officer Peterson uh, has been placed on administrative leave per standard policy with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. There were no other parties that were injured during this incident. There was some collateral damage, uh, some broken windows to a neighboring business in the strip mall. We're looking into that to determine whether that damage was actually caused by the officer's rounds or other things that may have happened in the evening. There's some talk both that may have happened. Uh, the subject is identified as Nicholas Underwood. He's a 24-year-old black male. He has an address here in Jacksonville on West 5th Street. He has no local arrest record. He does, however, have some misdemeanor records out of Broward County, Florida. The subject was armed with a six-shot, 22 caliber revolver. It had two live rounds in the gun. This was Officer Peterson. This was his first shooting. And I said, like I said, he's a 12-year veteran of Jackson Sheriff's Office. If there's some follow-up questions, I can answer. Can you get the spellings of, of both officers? That we'll... huh. Actually, you'll receive an email that have oh, we the officer's okay. information. Sure, thank you. Was the, uh, was the subject, Mr. Underwood, was he making any outward threats of showing, displaying this gun um, in the parking lot? I mean, was he walking toward the group when um, the officers told him and made those commands? Keep in mind, this is, like I said, this is a closing time, and it was a full night, so you had a parking lot full of probably several hundreds of people. Um, he had the gun raised, raised up, wasn't just in his at his side or anything like that. He had actually had the gun raised and was making his way towards the front. So Officer Peterson uh, kind of put the information together where somebody had said that they were going to go to their car, arm themselves with a gun. Shortly thereafter, was, had somebody pointed out that there was an individual with a gun. Two two together put it there that you know, there is a threat to the people that are out there. How far was the officer and, and, and the subject when um, the officer shot at the subject? Uh, within 10 feet, 10, 15 feet. So this shooting happened in plain sight of a lot of people. Yes, a lot of club goers. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? You, you asked that if the, your officer asked him to put it down more than once. I repeatedly ordered him to put the gun down, to get on the ground, to stop what he was doing. Repeatedly refused to comply. Any idea what the man's impetus was for going to get the gun in the first place? Still looking into what may have caused that. We may never know, to be honest with you. Do you have a conversation with anybody inside the club that had, had a fight with him early? We've spoken to the bouncers. Um, he was an individual who was ejected from the business earlier. But like I said, there were several times that the police had to go in the business and, and kind of quell some fights. That seems to be kind of a standard thing at that club. So it, it, that may not be out of the ordinary. Um, but he was identified by the bouncers as somebody who had been previously ejected from the club. So that, that may, again, may be related to it. But to know for sure, it's hard to say. So that club has a history of that kind of thing. Yeah. It appeared so, yes. He was ejected that same time. That same time. So, was he, uh, and I kind of asked this before, but was he saying anything when he was walking with the gun or, or making any threats or no? Was he silent? I, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Uh, the statements that we get from the officers uh, 
aren't full detailed statements because of their right to counsel, some other things that go with Garrity laws. So what we have is a, is a statement offered through the FOP attorney, so the, the details are still waiting to come forward. Does that sound a little bit more rowdy than usual, a typical Saturday night at this club, would you guys say? Um, like I said, it, it seems like the Saturday nights seem to be a pretty big night for them, and although the police did go in to, uh, to handle some skirmishes, that seems to be kind of a standard thing for them. So uh, I don't know enough about the history to know whether there was more people there this Saturday than other Saturdays, but it seemed pretty standard according to everyone we spoke with. This is a really big parking lot. Was it close to the entrance of the club, or was it kind of further out towards Beach Boulevard? It was closer to the entrance uh, than to Beach Boulevard. It's a very long uh, parking lot, but it was closer to the entrance. But it wasn't like right out in front as people. It wasn't were. directly in front, but it was uh, offset a little bit from the entrance, but close enough. Before closing time, this happened? No, this was after closing time. They, they closed at 2 a.m. All the patrons had left in the parking lot, kind of milling around. That's when the officers were trying to scoot him out, get him moving. He was approached. Where was he shot? The upper body. Any questions? Surveillance. That's going to be used in the investigation. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's a standard thing that we'll look for to see if any of the surrounding businesses have surveillance. That will be part of the investigation. Yeah. But you're not announcing any yet? No. Given the number of people in the parking lot at the time, it's kind of a testament to the officer that no one else was injured. Absolutely. I, I, again, you know, the officer has, has a lot of things going through his mind at the time, but you've got a busy parking lot, somebody actively making their way through a parking lot armed with a gun. It's a decisive second that he has to think about. All right.